Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Black Ops 3 playing a bit of Domination here on the map Combine running around here with the Razorback submachine gun and what we're going to be talking about today is Diamond SMGs unlocked, although unfortunately I didn't record the particular match where I actually unlocked Diamond Camo, usually I have that little thing that pops up and says Diamond Camo unlocked and Gold Camo for wherever the final SMG that I completed was, I don't have that footage, unfortunately I just can't show that to you guys, but I do have Diamond Camo, I can assure you, I can show you gameplay up there in the top right, I'm not using Diamond Camo in this particular match match but I am using diamond camo on my video a couple of days ago where I was using the CUDA discussing the Awakening DLC release on the Xbox as well as the PC but for this particular match we're going to be using that legendary light camouflage here on my Razorback because this gameplay was actually recorded while I was still progressing towards diamond submachine guns but as you guys saw my gameplay a couple of days ago as well as the gameplay on the top right hand side of your screen I do in fact have diamond SMGs I'm just not using it here in this video because I'm one of those people who is a definite glutton for pain and just as soon as I unlock diamond for a particular weapon tier, I just move on to the next weapon tier and don't really take the time to enjoy the fruits of my labor. But now that I'm actually 10th prestige, I'm getting closer and closer to prestige master. I think I'm like 10th prestige level 30 something, between 30 and 40. I am actually starting to use some of my diamond weapons a little bit, just so I can get up there to uh, prestige master a little bit quicker rather than trying to run around with pistols and knives and things like that, because I definitely level up much, much slower while using those little, I'll call them bottom tier weapons, because they're definitely, I mean, they're not bad, right? The pistols in this game aren't bad, but they're definitely not as good as the assault rifles or the SMGs or even in some cases the shotguns right it's just the very nature of things what we're going to be talking about today is actually going to be the submachine guns like I said I have diamond SMGs unlocked and like I typically do when I unlock diamond for a tier I like to talk about that particular tier all the weapons within that tier and give you guys my general thoughts and opinions uh, towards those weapons now we have actually six submachine guns to work with here in Black Ops 3 we have the CUDA the VMP the Weevil the Vesper the Pharaoh as well as the Razorback we're going to start things off here with the Razorback because it's the weapon that we're using here in this video the Razorback in my opinion is one of if not the best SMGs here in Black Ops 3. It's one of those SMGs that really grew on me, and I think I talked about this before. When I was going for gold camo on the Razorback, it quickly just became one of my favorite guns because I kept having good games with it. I kept getting ridiculous amounts of kills. I kept having these great matches. I remember telling my friends, like, yeah, I'm going to become a Razorback channel here soon if I don't hurry up and finish up the challenges on this gun because I'm getting so many great gameplays. I could do, you know, two weeks worth of videos, have every single gameplay be with a Razorback. You'll notice, if you pay close attention, I suppose, to my videos, that every single game of mine that has a Razorback on it has a different camo on that weapon because I have a ton of camo was unlocked for them because I've bought a lot of supply drops in the past and I want to make it so whenever I get a gameplay I'm going to swap the camo on it so it always feels a little bit different because I just don't want to only be using the same gun the same camo and stuff like that in every single one of my videos so my thought was if I use a different camo it won't seem as though I'm using the same gun in every single one of my videos you know because I got so many great games with the Razorback it's a great gun it is basically the peacekeeper from Black Ops 2 if you guys ever use that gun it is a long range submachine gun it has incredible range it is ridiculous I believe it can four shot kill right up there with most assault rifles it's actually ridiculously good it's one of those smgs where while yes you may lose to some things close range like it's not the best smg to be using up close against especially like a vesper or maybe a shotgun or the you know the 205 spam cannon or anything like that but you can still do well with it obviously at close range and you actually have very good range at those medium to long distances where you can take people out especially if you have better aim than them if you have better aim with a razorback and they have bad aim with an assault rifle you can actually typically outgun those people that's just the very nature of it because the Razorback is a submachine gun that has assault rifle range. It's definitely one of the best guns used here in Black Ops 3. I definitely recommend you guys trying it out. And if you're looking for attachment recommendations, I actually use a silencer and ghost on this thing. Like a silencer ghost, I like laser sight because for every reason I'm starting to hip fire more here in Black Ops 3. The more and more I play the game, the more and more I hip fire. It's it's definitely kind of an odd phenomenon, I suppose. But yeah, I recommend that. Maybe throw on an optical attachment if you're not comfortable with the iron sights. But the thing about the Razorback is I kind of recommend an optical attachment because you're going to be taking people out long range. That's just the very nature of it. If you're using a Weevil, for example, you don't need to use a reticle on the Weevil if you don't want to because you're not really going to be challenging people downrange with a Weevil. It's just not the way the weapon is designed. But if you're using a Razorback, you can challenge those people downrange and you know you can challenge people downrange so you're actually going to try it more often and just having the clarity of an optical attachment definitely helps out in my opinion. So Razorback, one of my favorite guns in Black Ops 3. It's ridiculously powerful.
powerful. Once I get Dark Matter unlocked, I'm definitely going to be using this gun a ton. And I'm definitely looking forward to that. The next weapon that I want to discuss is going to be the Cuda. So the Cuda was actually the first SMG that I got up to gold. It is an amazingly fun gun. It's incredibly powerful, especially up close, because a lot of people like to talk about its three-shot kill range. I've never really been into stats or anything like that, but yes, the Cuda can melt people pretty good close range. It's very powerful. But my favorite aspect of the Cuda is essentially it's an upgraded MP5. That's exactly what it feels like. When you're running around with it, it feels like you're using an old-school Call of Duty MP5. When you aim down sights with it or just using the iron sights, it feels as though you're using an MP5. It just it feels like an MP5. That's exactly what it is, right? And it's so much fun to use as a result. It's It feels like an MP5. It looks like an MP5. It just has a different name. Therefore, I immediately uh, started attaching myself to this weapon. It also doesn't help that it's like one of the first SMGs you get. So, or if not, it's actually the first SMG you get, right? So, right away, as soon as the game came out, I started using the Kuda. I'm like, oh boy, it's an MP5. And really, I just uh, I grew on to this weapon pretty quickly. It's one of those weapons that I just naturally gravitated to because it reminds me so much of the MP5, a gun that was featured in Call of Duty 4, which was one of the best, if not the best SMG in that game. It was also featured like the MP5K, which is kind of like the MP5 in the way it was in Modern Warfare 2 and I believe the original Black Ops, I think Modern Warfare 3 also had an MP5. It just, it's a weapon that I'm incredibly familiar with and therefore I really like it. It's one of those SMGs where it doesn't have an incredible fire rate. It's kind of like a high damage, kind of a lower fire rate, but not super low fire rate SMG and I just gravitated towards it pretty well and it's actually just one of the better guns in the game. If you guys haven't tried out the CUDA, I definitely recommend it. I know a lot of people started using the CUDA after the recent nerf to the Vesper. The Vesper got heavily nerfed in terms of recoil and made it a lot more difficult to use, so a lot of players start going out there trying out different SMGs, especially in competitive play, and one of those SMGs would be the CUDA because it's so ridiculously good. I love the CUDA. It's definitely one of my favorite guns to use here in Black Ops 3. The next SMG we're going to be discussing is going to be the VMP. Now, admittedly, the VMP was always one of those weapons I didn't like in Black Ops 3. just didn't like the VMP. I didn't like it during the beta. Everyone says, oh, it's so great. The beta. I'm like, I, I don't get it. I don't like this gun. I don't know why everybody likes it. You're just, it doesn't click with me for whatever reason, which is definitely a very subjective thing, but heck, I mean, every one of my videos is subjective. It's all just my opinion on stuff, right? So I've never really thought the VMP was a great gun. I didn't personally enjoy using it, and I'm actually not alone in that. I see a lot of other YouTubers talking all that as well, but at the same time, we have a lot of like pro players and competitive guys and, you know, really top tier gameplay YouTubers using the VMP all the time. So it's like, well, obviously there's something wrong with me. If everyone else seems to really be enjoying the VMP. There's something wrong just the way I'm using it, I guess. I don't know. But once I unlocked gold for the VMP, I actually started to like the weapon a little bit more. I found that my favorite two attachments on the VMP were laser sight and extended mag. I found that hip firing the VMP can just make the gun a monster. It really can. Like, I, for whatever reason, struggle with the iron sights. I don't know why. I don't like the iron sights. I don't like a red dot sight on the VMP. Just aiming down sights with that weapon just... I just don't do well with it for some reason. I don't understand. You guys have seen my channel, hopefully, for a number of years now. I'm a very above average player at Call of Duty. I've been playing the series for almost a decade, but there's just something about this weapon that just doesn't click with me while I'm aiming down sights. And so I found that just, you know, hip firing and spraying with extended mags and laser sight was actually a very effective way to use the VMP, and I definitely enjoyed it a lot more as a result. And it's one of those weapons that kind of grew on me more and more as I used it, but ultimately, it definitely was not one of my favorite weapons to use, and even once I unlocked Dark Matter, I still don't think I'm going to go back to that weapon too much, because just for me personally, I didn't like the VMP very much, which is definitely weird considering the next weapon I'm going to be talking about the Weevil. So many people say the Weevil needs to be buffed. So many people say that the Weevil is underpowered and it's not really good in any situation. It's outclassed by another SMG in one way or another in every single aspect of the weapon. But I personally love the Weevil. The Weevil is one of my favorite guns in Black Ops 3. I loved it during the beta. I love it during the live game. Now I understand statistically, and again, this is why I say stats don't matter in Call of Duty, right? They, they just don't. They, people get so excited and so worked up like, oh, it has this four-shot kill range at this range, or oh, it has this fire rate as compared to this other fire rate, and the time to kills like none of these things matter guys they've never mattered they never will matter it just comes down to how well the gun actually performs in game people will talk about the stats all they want but ultimately it comes down to how well a player can actually use that particular weapon and one of those weapons for me is the weevil it's statistically a bad gun i like the weevil though it's a fun smg to use it feels like a p90 it feels like maybe a weaker p90 considering but uh, it's still one of my favorite guns to use here in black ops 3 it's just a very fun weapon to use and maybe it's because i'm a bit nostalgic for the old uh cod 4 and modern warfare 2 p90s maybe that's the case Case, but still, I think the Weevil is a fun SMG to use. It statistically is not a very good gun. It does have a, an above average ammo count, if that makes any difference. Like, you do have that giant magazine. It's kind of like having extended mags on for free. And for that reason, I think I like it, because I like the ability to take out four or five people if I have the uh, chance to. If I get behind four or five people and I'm using the Weevil, I know I can actually kill all those people, because one, the gun does kill in a decent amount of time. That's just a fact. It's, people act like it's like impossible to kill somebody with the Weevil. That's not true. It's actually just 
uh, it's right up there with all the other SMGs pretty much and it has that giant magazine size so by default you can spray down a lot of people and I like it it's a fun gun I understand that if you use like an extended mag CUDA you'll probably get better results than you would with the Weevil but still I feel so the Weevil is a fun viable SMG to use here in Black Ops 3 I don't feel as though it necessarily needs to be buffed I think it kind of fits a niche that a lot of SMGs don't have which is a giant magazine count and a giant ammo count by default that's kind of its niche every single weapon is going to be a little bit different Razorback is your long range SMG the Pharaoh is your burst fire SMG your Vesper is your super high fire rate close quarters SMG your Weevil is your mid middle of the road all around decent SMG with a giant magazine the VMP I don't know what the VMP is actually supposed to be and then the Kuda is like your super is like your workhorse it's your powerhouse right that's like your uh, slower fire rate high damage SMG so Every SMG here in Black Ops 3 fits a niche, fits a role, fits a purpose, and the Weeble's purpose is to be the middle-of-the-road SMG that has a giant magazine that is generally pretty easy to use, all things considered. The next weapon is going to be the Vesper. Of course, the old Vesper. We can't uh, get through an SMG video without talking about the Vesper, so... What's unique about the Vesper is it was recently nerfed. Now, a lot of these SMGs, they were either buffed or nerfed, you know, sometimes uh, throughout Call of Duty's Black Ops 3's life cycle. But the Vesper took probably the heaviest nerf because a, they gave it a ton of recoil. They made it so it kicks a lot more as well as they made it so when you hip fire it, your accuracy definitely suffers a lot. Your crosshairs when you're hip firing are a lot more spread out than they are on the rest of the submachine guns. I still like the Vesper. The Vesper is a fun SMG. It now fits the niche that it's supposed to fit, which is super close range, super high fire rate, just death machine. Machine, right? That's essentially what it is. If you run into a Vesper up close, even after the nerf, you're probably going to die because that's what the SMG is good at. It is good at just spraying you down. If you think of all these super high fire rate SMGs that have come out in Call of Duty's history, the Vesper is just another one of those. It melts people at close range. That's what it does. Maybe it melts people better than other SMGs. Like if you think of like a mini Uzi from previous years, which was like a you know super high fire rate SMG, super low damage, but still it can melt people at close range because of its crazy high fire rate. Maybe it's kind of like that, but better. I admit the Vesper is probably better at killing than like a mini Uzi was for example but still it's a very balanced smg in this game in my opinion but it just it can get annoying to die to it very close range but at the same time it's also kind of fun to use the weapon because you kind of feel like you're using a shotgun while using a submachine gun in some respects right so when you're running around the vesper you know that you're really going to struggle at taking people out at medium ranges even if you even if you pop fire like if you burst fire like you, you you're feathering the trigger essentially while trying to shoot these people down range the gun just kicks so freaking much now it's absurd even with the grip or any any of the recoil mitigation attack that you can actually equip to this weapon it's not going to help man the gun still kicks like a freaking mule after the update which again i think that's a good thing because what they try to do what game developers try to do when they're trying to put together weapon tiers right they want to make it so every weapon feels unique it looks unique it sounds unique and it fits a unique theme or a unique role right and that's what they try to do with the submachine guns here in black ops 3 i already went over all the rules and the rule for the vesper is it wants to be that super close range high fire rate smg that's very good at close range but not really effective at any other range and when when the game first came out because of its real lack of recoil for how high its fire rate was it was one of those smgs that really kind of dominated at close and medium ranges which was definitely bad so they wanted to kind of alleviate that they nerfed it they made it so it kicks a lot more therefore it still does what it's supposed to do and melts people close range but you're definitely going to struggle a lot more with the gun if you're trying to take them out at those medium to long ranges and the final smg we're going to be talking about today is going to be the pharaoh this is a very interesting gun because it's an auto burst smg now the first burst smg that we ever saw in the call of the series was in Black Ops 2 with the Chicom CQB and a lot of people loved it a lot of people hated it it's just one of those guns for me where I'm just like eh it's a burst SMG just something about it feels off to me it just it doesn't feel natural to me to use this burst SMG but here in Black Ops 3 the Pharaoh is a little bit different it still does feel a little bit off-putting to be to be burst firing a submachine gun right it, it, it just feels weird that you have all of this muscle memory 10 years almost for me a muscle memory just holding down the trigger with an SMG and just spamming it right but then you put out the Pharaoh and it's like oh well I guess I can still hold down the trigger but it's a burst fire so instinctively just like the XR2 even though it's an auto burst and it will cycle through its burst by itself I still pull down the trigger every single time one pull after another with the Pharaoh it's just every time the burst is done I pull the trigger again it's just how I play the Pharaoh but that gun grew on me pretty quickly it's one of those guns that I actually have a lot of clips I keep talking about this Black Ops 3 montage I'm eventually making I am going to eventually make it because I have so many clips that it's starting to fill my hard drive but I have a lot of clips with the Pharaoh believe it or not because it's one of those SMGs that you can take out a ton 
of people because it's very conservative with its ammo, right? You're going to not, you're not going to waste a lot of ammunition when using a burst fire SMG. Same way you don't waste a lot of ammunition while using a burst fire assault rifle. It just doesn't happen because you put one burst into somebody, possibly two bursts, and they're dead. And you don't just end up spraying a bunch of extra ammo. You'll end up missing as much because you have to be more accurate while using a burst fire SMG. The Pharaoh is one of those guns that it just, it grew on me the more and more I used it. I talked a while ago about the Pharaoh SMG and why I thought it was potentially Black Ops 3's best kept secret because it's one of those guns that while it was, yes, very good, nobody's ever seemed to use it, at least in my circle. Like in public matches, I never saw it. Like I played a lot of Kill Confirmed, Domination, and Ground War. Those are primarily the game modes I play. And while playing in those game modes, I never ran the people using the Pharaoh. It just didn't happen. This was like a while back, like back November, December, somewhere along those lines. And I talked about, is this like the best kept secret of Black Ops 3? Is this like secretly the best SMG in the game? Because I was showing people gameplay in that video of just me just destroying everybody with that gun. Because it, again, it's very powerful. You don't waste ammo because it's a burst fire SMG. And you can very quickly go through a lot of people without wasting too much ammo. It's fantastic to use the Pharaoh. And I still think that's true to this day. I still feel as though it's one of the best SMGs here in Black Ops 3. Well, at the same time, I feel as though it's massively underused because at the end of the day, it's a burst fire SMG. Regardless of its auto burst mechanic or not, it's still a burst fire SMG that kind of is off putting to people. People are like, what? Burst fire SMG? This this feels odd. I'm just going to go back to my full auto you know, Vesper or my CUDA or something like that. So I think that's one of the reasons why it's underused. There's definitely a lot of higher skill players that like to use it, but for the general Call of Duty populace, you don't see the Pharaoh getting a lot of use. I think it's because the burst fire ends because it's a little bit off-putting. But still, it's one of the best guns in Black Ops 3. It's definitely one of the best SMGs. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to conclude my review, I suppose, of the SMGs here in Black Ops 3 now that I have Diamond Camo unlocked for them. Overall, the SMGs in this game are pretty good. I, I think if you want to look at it from a game perspective, you can definitely say that in some Call of Duty games, SMGs team, seem to outgun assault rifles more. Maybe assault rifles seem to outgun SMGs. I feel as though in Black Ops 3, we have a pretty good balance, all things considered. I feel as though SMGs and assault rifles have a nice mix, nice variety, and you can definitely be successful with both of those weapon tiers on any map in any game mode, and the SMGs in this game are definitely not overpowered in my opinion. I don't think they're underpowered. I think they're very balanced, all things considered. Like I mentioned earlier, they have this nice niche amongst all of them, and they definitely fill a specific role, and if you wanted to fill that specific role, you can just by picking the right submachine gun and on the right map in the right game mode in the right circumstance. So overall, I feel as though the SMGs in this game are pretty good. I can't wait to start using them again because, again, I'm one of those people who's just a glutton for punishment, and once I get done with the assault rifles, I just never touch the assault rifles until I get dark matter. Once I got done with the SMGs, I have gone back and used the diamond CUDA a little bit because I just wanted to see what diamond looks like. And I wanted to use the CUDA because it's one of my favorite guns to use, and so I did use that for a couple of games. But for the most part, I haven't really touched my, these SMGs since I got diamond unlocked for them. I'm still working towards uh, diamond on my secondaries. I did finish diamond on my launchers, then I have diamond on the uh, light machine guns to work for, and then that's it. So basically, if I finish up the light machine guns, I finish up the combat knife, and finish up two more pistols, I'll have dark matter, and that's going to be pretty cool in my own personal opinion. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. Please drop me a rating, and let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on the SMGs here in Black Ops 3. Even if you guys could go down the list like I did, like go CUDA, VMP, Weevil, Vesper, Pharaoh, Razorback. Like, just give a quick summary as to what you think about all six SMGs. I'll definitely be interested to read about that. I definitely want to hear what a lot of people think about the Weevil, because I know a lot of people have conflicting opinions on the Weevil. Some people say, oh, the Weevil is awesome. It's a very fun gun to use. Then there's other people that say the Weevil is so brokenly underpowered that you can't even use it. It's completely not viable in any respect. It's like, I, I never understood that perspective, but then again, to each his own. Everyone looks at a game different. Everybody plays differently and guns are formed differently in the different hands, I suppose. You know, if you take like a, someone who's been playing Call of Duty for 10 years and give them a gun, they can typically do something with it that people that maybe don't play as much can do with it. It's just, it's one of those things, right? So definitely let me know in the comments what you guys think about the various submachine guns here in Black Ops 3. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend. Please drop me a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.